What's good, YouTube? In today's video, I want to talk about Stephen A. Smith's response to Skip Bayless. The video you're about to watch on the Self Talks YouTube channel is for fair use purposes. Stephen A. Smith trying to allude that Skip Bayless was begging him to work with him and to save him to come on first take in 2012. Skip Bayless dropped the bomb. Stephen A. Smith wasn't even man enough to respond to him on video or in another podcast the same way he told this lie. Kyrie Irving made tweets that didn't have anything to do with Stephen A. Smith. He didn't say his name. He didn't try to, you know, sneak diss him or anything. Kyrie Irving has been very vocal about the media. So Kyrie Irving tweets could have been about anyone, not even a specific person, just the media and what he's been going through you know he does have his own testimony in life the fact that Kyrie Irving made a couple tweets Stephen A. Smith had this to say and you know especially in Brooklyn with Mr. Kyrie Irving mm -hmm. oh yeah that brother put out a tweet today we ain't talking about it today because we at the NFL draft let me look into the audience and say this oh you thought I had stuff to say before Wait until first take tomorrow. And after Smith said that, he went on to have full segments confronting Kyrie Irving about his tweets. Did the same rundown about Kyrie Irving, the same shit that he's been saying about Kyrie, breaking down the same stuff, saying the same old things. I also exposed Stephen A. Smith in another video telling a ball sack story lie on ESPN first take. I'll have that clip right here. Yo, yo, what's up, YouTube? Coming back out, y'all, with another video. Now, y'all remember two days ago, I, um, I made a video about Stephen A. Smith lying on Kyrie Irving about this fake uh, blog post that went around saying he called Kyrie Irving. I mean, excuse me, that he called James Harden washed up in a game of one-on-one. That's what Stephen A. Smith said about Kyrie Irving. Well, that has already been fact-checked by Complex and many other bloggers that does great research that that was a lie. And um, I was watching a Pivot podcast the other night, and Stephen A. Smith he said it again and I don't think people caught this because the Pivot podcast interview was before Stephen A. Smith had said that on um, first take with Magic Johnson so uh, yeah man so I just I caught it again I'm like wow this dude is really just he's just gonna continue with this narrative and it's crazy like okay so this shit was like days apart the Pivot interview so it's like it goes to show you how these script reading will go on uh, national television with just these narratives and lies and just continue spreading this shit. Stephen A probably came in pumped up. He probably came in pumped up, ready to go, no, 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 no. Ain't no way you telling me Aaron Rodgers did not get the juggernaut. There's no way you telling me that. And then they said, hey, hey, hey. They gave him that little look, hey. And they said, here's what I want you to say. It has been fact-checked that Kyrie Irving did not say that. To James Harden in the game of one on one, and then they just continue to add like, "Yeah, Kyrie Irving is this." Like I just, I just keep seeing this shit around. Like, even the YouTubers who started covering after Stephen A. Smith continues to say this, and it's just like, man, it goes to show you when how you can spread a narrative one time, and then that shit just takes off before the truth can catch up. So um, I'm gonna show this Mark Twain quote about that, and then. I'm going to show bits and pieces and clips of the Pivot Podcast interview with Stephen A. Smith. Shout out to the Pivot Podcast. Uh, salute to everybody. Salute to the YouTubers. Salute to the content creators. Salute to the chat. Salute to my Patreon members. Salute to Uncle Shug. Salute to, uh, shit, everybody, man. Just shout out everybody. Uh, y'all keep doing y'all thing. We out. People have the right to feel how they want about the vaccine. That's not my issue with Kyrie Irving. My issue with Kyrie Irving is that Kyrie Irving finds every excuse under the sun not to show up for work. Okay, so in this next clip, um, this was previous in the clip before he started talking about Kyrie Irving. Stephen A. Smith was talking about his issues with James, Har James Harden always partying. Um, and, you know, everybody know like when James Harden go to a new town or a new team or whatever, uh, the strip club bill goes up. Uh, 
Yeah, so basically Stephen A. Smith was, is judgmental about James Harden constantly going to the strip club after games or if he loses and plays bad and whatever. It doesn't matter if James Harden goes 0 for 20, he's going to be spotted going to the strip club or partying with rappers. And Stephen A. Smith gave his opinion on that. I'm not going to play a full clip of that, but I, I just want to um, transition to the clip where Stephen A. Smith goes into this, this fake narrative that um, he was called, that James Harden was called washed up by another superstar player, which, of course... Stephen A. Smith is talking about Kyrie Irving. That's what he said on ESPN First Take about uh, there was news or whatever, his sources, whatever the fuck he said about um, Kyrie Irving calling James Harden washed up, which has already been debunked. So that's the next clip. And then after that clip, we're going to wrap this video up. Salute. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this long, hit that like button. Subscribe. Hit the cash app. Support your boy Self Talk. Thank you. James Harden is bigger. James Harden is stronger. He's a four-time league scoring champion who got called out by another superstar in the league who called him washed up. Then showed up in your house and said, essentially, I'm going to bust your ass. So that goes to show you Stephen A. Smith's credibility is absolute garbage. It's trash juice. I wouldn't take Smith's word for shit. He doesn't fact check the shit that he says. And this is just small stuff, you know. It's not like I'm going deep trying to fully expose him. This is just stuff that I remember off top because of just covering, you know, the Smith and Kyrie thing on my channel. The fact that Skip Bayless came out and confronted him goes to show you that Stephen A. Smith is leading down the path of destruction. And that's why First Take is in the garbage. That's why... He tried to fire Max Kellerman to try to make it seem like Max Kellerman was a problem. But we all know Max Kellerman was not the problem. It was Stephen A. Smith. He came in there with an attitude. He acted like a little female. Just like when Kendrick Perkins had that take with Quavo on the show. Look at how Stephen A. Smith was acting like a diva. All because he didn't know Quavo was on the show. And had a little quick five minute segment. Promote his album. Him and Kendrick Perkins had a little friendly banter. A little back and forth. And that was it. Stephen A. Smith acted like a little female. I'll have that clip right here. Yeah, it's all love. Listen, if we had beef, we would have made hamburgers. And either two things would have happened. Either Quavo would have been grilling and he would have been serving triple meats. Or I would have been grilling and serving little sliders. That's what would have happened if we would have nah, had we, beef. It, it, it's we, no beef. We, it's just a little... It's just a little... It, it's just a little lip boxing, okay? It's a little lip boxing, and I'm all cool with it. Like I said, when I used to have to walk in the cafeteria and I had them high water pants on because I couldn't afford the long jeans, I had to be ready to clap back if people used to make fun of me. I'm used to it. We all, we all, we all came from nothing, big part. You know that we all came from nothing, we, <laughs> and we here today. You and feel you, what and I'm you're saying? both so. doing your thing, onward and upward. Thank you guys so much for being with us. Who knew First Take would become Switzerland? Quavo, we appreciate you. Good luck to your Hawks, Big Perk. I'm sure I'll be talking to you tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for the time. Culture 3, it's out tomorrow. All right, uh, gentlemen. Were you not entertained? That was entertaining. I wasn't. You were not entertained? No, I wasn't. Oh, I was entertained. I didn't like it one bit. Why is that? Because I don't. I'm going to leave it at that. I don't. I had nothing to do with that. I didn't know anything about it. Okay. You want to you talk the games? Who wins tonight? And Skip Bayless just pretty much admitted how Stephen A. Smith bends over backwards for the company. I watched Stephen A. Smith on another podcast. I wish I can remember it. It was somebody who sent me a link to this podcast. I never watched it. It was like my first time watching it, and I was just on. Um, chilling back, playing a video game, had the podcast on. It was like a two-hour two podcast. Smith came on the show, and he was talking about how the host basically just alluded to how, you know, the reason why he left ESPN was because of company policy. And he said, you know, he was like, you know, he was like, Smith, how can a guy like you who put the company first have to deal with, like, facing these challenges and stuff like that when, you know, when the company gets called out for doing certain stuff and you know Stephen A. Smith answered it but you know it just goes to show you the the truth about Smith just being his company man you know he is the guy that said what he wakes up every day so thinking about how to make his bosses more money and um you know that's the type of guy he is so you got to think a guy that's that talks like that is willing to do anything to make his bosses happy 
And that means if they tell him this story is a lie and we don't care, this is what we want you to say. Read this script. He's going to do that. So many people have left ESPN, man, over the years. And um, as you can see, a lot of them are actually happier in doing a lot more than Stephen A. Smith. And um, I think he just he likes that sense of power. He has to constantly just talk about how, you know, he runs first take. He ha- He has to constantly pump his chest out and I do this I have this and they trust me and they trust me to do this I control everything like he you know he just has to constantly do that type of shit man and um you know so Skip Bayless called him out let's watch the Skip Bayless clip before I say what I'm about to say about Stephen A. Smith let me gather myself what I cannot tell you how wrong that was. It was so recklessly inaccurate. It was such shocking fabrication. I thought, how could my brother Stephen A turn on me like that? On on me? Seriously? Stephen A was suggesting that he saved and then made first take. All right. So I chopped that down in bits and pieces just to avoid copyright infringement or copyright strikes, copyright claims, copyright everything. That's what happens on YouTube. But y'all can watch the full clips on Skip Bayless podcast. I'll have the full clip link in the description. Skip Bayless was responding to Stephen A. Smith saying this. That all debate format featuring Skip Bayless. And that's when it really took off. Of course, part of the interruption was already in play around the horn and stuff like that. But as it pertained to first take, that's where its real origin came from. Skip was doing it with a potpourri of individuals um, for a few years. I had been gone from ESPN over a contract dispute from January uh, from um, May of 2009 to February of 2011. Skip Bayless was doing his thing with First Take, having the two live stews, Jamel Hill, Rob Parker, and various other people debating against him. And then in 2012, they weren't satisfied with the numbers. They weren't satisfied with the ratings, the rev- level of revenue that was being generated. Skip Bayless comes to me in the parking lot. Uh, on on the campus of ESPN in Bristol, Connecticut. And he says, I know you got your plans. You love the NBA. You love being out on the road. You love being in the locker room. But he said, but I need you. He said, I can't. I've done all that I could to take this as far as I could go. I need you to do this for me, please. He said, I just need three years. He said, I think we'll knock it out the park. Okay, I just broke that down in the segments. That's what Stephen A. Smith said on J.J. Riddick's podcast. And that's the reason why Skip Bayless had to address it publicly and on video because that's what Stephen A. Smith did. He lied about it. And I um, also want to highlight the power of bloggers, man. Um, salute to the bloggers, man. Blogging is not dead. I feel like a lot of people sleep on blogging because, you know, video and everything is like in our faces. But, man, the power of writers and bloggers, man, do not sleep on blogging. A lot of these sports shows, that's where they get a lot of they takes and segments from is from the bloggers and the writers who put out the articles and shit first and then you know a lot of these youtubers get their videos and articles and shit from bloggers man so salute to the bloggers it was something that skip bayless said he said he wasn't even going to address it until the new york post wrote about it and then when you look at the new york post article they you know how they wrote it was like hold on let me see if i can find it okay it said from new york post It says Stephen A. Smith recalls Skip Bayless begging him to join first take. And then, you know, the article just pretty much went off the the headline. And and then, yeah, like the New York Post, you know, they was doing their little sneaky shit to basically trying to, you know, egg some shit on. And then uh, they said Stephen A. Smith reminisced on a time that Skip Bayless begged him to form the daily duo that eventually became first take. So, yeah, man, um, that's the power of blogging, man. Get Bayless said he wasn't even going to dress it until he saw New York Post post about it and other blog sites started picking it up. And um, yeah, man, so salute to the bloggers. Y'all are well respected. But yeah, man, so um, after all that little fiasco, Stephen A. Smith didn't even have the balls to address Get Bayless either on his podcast show or his little segment, Stephen A.'s World. Or all this other stuff Stephen A. Smith has. I think he still has that radio show. He, 
he says he runs first take so he can clearly make a segment real quick about Skip Bayless and call him out if he felt like it. But no, he's not man enough to do that. He has to write on Twitter after Skip Bayless dropped the fucking bomb on him. And that's probably going to get eventually a million views. The views are going up crazy right now on those videos and the clips that Skip Bayless team is breaking down. All right. So I want to read y'all Stephen A. Smith's tweet. And this is what he said. My only comments on the matter. I didn't lie about a damn thing. This is nothing more than a misunderstanding. As I stated on many occasions, Skip Bayless made first take. He carried it on his back for years. And when he asked me to come on, he needed me because he carried the show on his back for years. He needed me as a permanent host. He asked and chose me. He put that in uh, capital letters, me. Because of his decision, I've enjoyed the success I've had because of him. I've become what I've become at ESPN. Skip Bayless is my brother. I will always love this man. And I will always be grateful no matter how far I continue to climb. I have him to thank. My comments about the state of first take at that time is what I was told. It certainly wasn't meant to slight my brother. I would never intentionally do that. The only sad part about that portion of this is that he appears to not know that. Despite my consistent commentary over the years regarding how much he means to me, check the record. The rest I will address with my brother Skip privately. Now, if y'all would excuse me, I've got an NBA finals to finish covering. And that's what Stephen A. Smith had to say in response to Skip Bayless videos. And like I said, he's a bitch. For real, man, that's what I think, man. Smith is a bitch for not addressing that man on video. The same way he told those lies on video, Skip Bayless addressed him publicly for a reason. And Skip Bayless said a lot. Stephen A. Smith, you can also say a lot back. Nah, don't bow your head down and, 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 and kiss boots and, you know, lick boots and all that shit. Don't fold. Don't be like, oh, man, Skip, uh, uh, yeah, man. Because, man, if this was Kyrie Irving, if this was probably a, a, a black colleague of his or somebody, not even just to throw color on there, but just, just how Stephen A. Smith acts towards black athletes. And how he does this type of shit. He just goes the fuck off on him. But every time it's a white analyst or somebody that addresses him white, he respectfully disagrees. He respectfully says this, respectfully this, respectfully that. And that's why I think that's why he got rid of um Max Kellerman. He doesn't like to sit next to a white man that much that he fears. Max is a little bit younger. Max knows boxing. Max probably got the hands. Max is more um, black dominant as far as just the audience goes. Max talks about hip hop. Max quotes hip hop things. He made Stephen A. Smith look like he wasn't even about his culture every day. And that's what Stephen A. Smith hate because he doesn't like his own skin, in my opinion. It seems like he tries to hide away from that. He always has to emphasize he's a black man and he's a black man. It's like we know that Smith, but your action says otherwise. And I'm not saying that he's saying that he's a white man, but I'm just saying his action says that he he puts his people down, man. And um, it's like the, the more he realizes that the sooner he realizes what he does, the sooner he can actually get a black audience to start liking and accept and, and accepting him. Look at Jalen Rose's history as an analyst. Never really attacked players. He always defended the players. And that's why that segment went viral when he was um, thick enough for Kwame and Chris Bosh, you know, like the name calling and shit that they used to do a lot back then. So, um, yeah, man, uh, Stephen A. Smith track record is just is bad and it's, and it's running off and it's running on Kendrick Perkins it was something Kendrick Perkins said and I said man this dude is honestly being around Stephen A. Smith too much I'm like Kendrick after hearing Perk pocket watch I'm like oh yeah man he's knees deep in the media and that's that Stephen A. Smith influence is running off on him man because um it was a segment where Richard Jefferson was talking about the players um, complaining about 
the season and they wanted to have less games in the season. And Richard Jefferson was going off and he was like, he kept it about basketball. He was just like, you know, how do these players want the season shortened when they already got shorter games? They already got, they don't play back to backs. They got, you know, more rest days and they got chiropractors and massage therapists on the road with them. They got all these training facilities now and just all this stuff that players didn't have back in the day. And, you know, he was just saying how the league is pretty much catering to these guys and, Richard Jefferson was just going off and then Kendra Perkins going to throw a little slick jab in there and, and don't forget the money. Don't forget the money. And then Richard Jefferson's like, oh, oh yeah. And the money. It's like, come on, Perk. You, you doing that media shit too much. You can't, you can't talk about players without bringing up their money, man. I just don't understand that shit with athletes. Like who gives a fuck? Like, so put it like this. Kyrie Irving will probably be more appreciated and applaud by hell the media and a little bit more of the everyday sports fans and I'm talking about the ones who can get manipulated Kyrie Irving would probably be more appreciated by those guys if Kyrie Irving was the 15th roster spot guy the guy that's on the minimum league contract and the guy that doesn't get talked about but he'd get commended for the things that Kyrie Irving does now as you know, one of the guys with the max contract on the team. The guy with the name, the guy with the face that can be the face of a franchise. The fact that Kyrie Irving makes so much money, that's all they want to judge him off of. You know, oh, how can you do this? How can you do that? Uh, you want to take time off and mental breaks and um, all this stuff that they be talking about Kyrie Irving, man. You know, if he was a 15th guy on the roster, Making a league minimum, man, they wouldn't be saying nothing about him. They would honestly probably be commending him every day when they talk about his name. Oh, yeah, we should talk about Kyrie Irving more because he just took off and he's doing this for the community. He's doing that. But they don't talk about that shit, man, you know. But, yeah, that's all I got for this video. Just want to highlight Stephen A. Smith's response to Skip Bayless. Make sure y'all hit that like button for me. Subscribe up if you're new. And um, after this video ends, even if you left a comment during this premiere in the live chat, make sure y'all go down in the comment section below, man. That is very important for these videos, man. Um, We can have 100 people watching, but then only one person in the comment section. Make sure y'all go in the comment section, man. That helps the video. That helps the video get put out in the algorithm. And also that helps you guys to get engaged with my content. A lot of people don't realize when they be like, oh, man, I missed your videos. Or, you know, they be like, oh, I'm not getting notifications. But that's because YouTube doesn't want to notify you about a channel that you're not even engaged with. That's all I got for today. Make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe up if you're new. And leave a comment down below. And this is Self Talk for Self Talk News. Salute.